Phoenix electrical requirements are as follows. Um, we do provide a toggle switch on off, uh, which is very convenient when doing service um, and needing to get into the components in here. Uh, we offer multiple knockouts to bring our power into the cabinet and we're going to show you where exactly we connect them. We have a nice terminal strip within the cabinet for connections to go to. The control board is fused at 6.3 amps, which means the control board can pull no more than 6.3 amps of power, so a simple 15 amp breaker would be sufficient. Um, when running, the Phoenix runs about 0.80 amps, uh, very low amp draw when it's running. Um, so again, a 15 amp breaker would suffice in this case. I'm going to talk a little bit about the electronics on the Phoenix units. Uh, what we have here on the front cabinet, of course, is our display. Now, the display does a few things for you. Of course, it lets you know what the temperature set point is on the heater. It also allows you to access what we call a status menu, which is critical when we're doing some troubleshooting. And if we want to see what's generally going on with the heater, and it will give us some information as to how long it's been running, some things like that. It allows us to set our parameters in here. Of course, we need to set a set point. We need to know what temperature we want this heater to run to. And that would all be done through this electronic control display. When we open up this front cabinet, we can see some of the main components, of course. So right here we have the gas valve, our blower motor, our exhaust outlet assembly, some safeties, and our electronic control. And this electronic control is nice on a slide, so we can slide it out here and, and get a good look at it and do some work to it. The Phoenix is a 120 volt, 60 hertz appliance. As we talked about, a 15 amp breaker would suffice. And we talked about the side knockouts. So we bring our wiring into the cabinet and we have a terminal strip here for us to wire to. Here we have our terminal strip for ease of wiring, of course, so we can bring our wires through the side of the cabinet. And we have them clearly labeled. We have hot, neutral, and ground. Uh, to the right of that, what we have is, a, is an output for a condensate pump. We talked a little bit about the ability to, to remove condensate and a pump may be necessary, so we give them some power to connect to. Very nice feature. The other connection on this terminal strip is what we call outdoor reset. We talked a little bit about the ability to do some space heating off their auxiliary taps, and this will give our control the ability to do some outdoor reset, which we will talk about a little bit later. This is our main control board. This is the brains behind the operation, and as you can see, if it needed to come out, we simply slide this out, pull out the five screws, and we have the control board. All the wiring is done through what we call Molex connectors, and they are simply just clipped on and unclip. Control board would be able to be removed and then replaced by simply reinstalling the screws and the wires. We're back in their spot, and these wires are keyed, so almost impossible to get these wrong. And then the slide goes back in. The door shuts and I have a nice clean front.